Hey everybody, we've got a Protoss versus Zerg matchup here for you today. It's also a little bit of a preview of a potential throne room match. The grand finals of Acropolis number one could feature the Shambler and definitely feature Neblime. And of course it will be a Zerg versus Protoss no matter what, based on the bracket that we still have. So I thought I'd go back way, way back to the 10th of April when Neblime and the Shambler clashed on Ithaca, which is one of Shambler's nudist four player maps. We'll see if it holds up to the same level of Shattered Temple where we obviously saw a game yesterday. Uh, so Shambler double featuring today as he's playing and it's his map. Let's see what happens. Now I specifically isolated what I thought would be the largest replay so that we could get the meatiest game, but there are other games that were played on this, so maybe we'll go back to look at those matches after Acropolis is over. Uh, but uh, I have quite the log of games to get to, uh, many of which are not even downloaded yet, uh, or if they are, they're in like the gauntlet stage that I still haven't been able to go back to. I'm uh, just trying to make sure that we catch all the new people coming in, and also that we cast uh, some matches that are topical for the tournament. So Cosmonarchy is a new game built within the Brood War engine. Uh, we have here a completely different style of sort of tech tree progression. For example, Protoss actually don't have any tech requirements. The only question is, do you have enough resources to allocate for that expensive tech? And when can you do it? So we've seen cheeky tech strategies where they go for a rush to a tier three or tier four structure. Uh, meanwhile, obviously Zerg do have tech requirements and so do Terran who are not gonna feature in this one, but you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, one of the things that you'll eventually notice as Neblime is here putting his hatch at the ramp uh, in a way that I believe will block most movement of medium and, and larger units uh, between the top of the structure and the rest of this little cliff. Uh, but eventually these players will start to harvest Vespine. Uh, we see a, a, a cute little gateway wall attempt here. I'm not sure that that's going to be too necessary or too useful. I mean, the build space is something that he's going to have to wrangle himself. Uh, but you can harvest gas directly from the source. You don't actually need to harvest uh, to put down a structure for in fact, you can't put down a structure uh, unless you are at tier two, or in the case of Protoss, unless you want to drop 400 minerals on the aquifer, which is the renamed uh, uh, assimilator. Uh, we've done a lot of renaming. You can see the worker names are different. Uh, and of course, some of their models are also different. Like we have a, new, a custom model for the scribe, courtesy of a co-contributor, a uh, project contributor named Solstice. Shout out to Solstice. He's done a lot of model work for us. And yeah, uh, in general, uh, since we have this tournament running, and we have a pretty meaty prize pool for it, as a matter of fact. It's uh, very high up there in terms of the... Uh, it's it's already in the triple digits, I'll say that much. And uh, there is a three in there, and it might be the first number of the of the actual number, if you know what I mean. If that made any sense to you, comment below. Uh, now, the Legionnaire is out and will already start to harass the, uh, the worker here. As you can see, that did not last very long indeed. You can borrow immediately, though. You don't have any researches or upgrades that you have to get. Instead, those have been integrated into the units that they affect. So all Zerg ground units can borrow uh, just from the game start. And that Legionnaire uh, teleportation effect that you saw a little bit there, it's not something that you have to upgrade somewhere else. Uh, so you can see here Shambler was uh, blocking the uh, movement of any units coming in. Uh, he's going for Lattice, double Lattice, and that will allow him to field some... Robotic units. Zethercore is going to go ahead and attempt to make it through. I'm not sure that Shambler saw that. It's hard to say. But there is going to be a defensive circuit in place behind the hatch there for Neblime. And he's just going to see if he can get away with a, a little bit of a cheeky scout. And indeed he will. The, the scout had been abandoned and now the jig is up. We see a bunch of vassals are indeed involved in this. So we immediately have the response of putting down a Kagrant in the resource line. In Cosmonarchy, your uh, workers and such do not block building. Uh, you can build over your own units. So you don't have to worry about like taking all of your workers and moving them to one side and all this other stuff. Uh, it will indeed immediately be a spray. And I love what he's doing here. He's going to go ahead and borrow the quasis. Now, based on the way that the vassals are planned to move through, I do think that what we'll end up seeing is Shambler kind of stick to the top. Uh, so he is going to go ahead and attempt to commit some worker attacks, but it's not going to work out for him too nicely there. The vassals are indeed going to mostly be picked off, and he'll at the very least get that there's no natural just yet. We have a spray at the uh, front line, and what this confirms is basically Shambler needs to stop worrying about building uh, vassals. Like, he's made a couple of them. They can contribute to his main war effort, but he needs to start switching off into maybe golems or some other such production. And now, for the first time, Shambler's actually going to be going for some Vespine. 
he actually had not harvested gas uh, up until this point, which is quite abnormal uh, for the Protoss in this matchup. So that's an interesting sort of modifier. Now the Quasilisks are moving across. The Zethercore does end up getting bopped yet again. That was the other Zethercore that goes in just for a scout, maybe a cheeky attempt at depowering the pylon, which you guys know uh, pylons are a lot less tanky in Cosmonarchy compared to uh, StarCraft 1. Uh, and the reason for that is because they're smaller and cheaper. So you can make more of them. Uh, but there's always this gambit of like, well, min-maxing my expenditure, I should build only one pylon. Uh, however, if you do that, you run the risk of them powering a lot of stuff and then not uh, really nothing being uh, working at any point after that. Shambler going to go for his natural expansion at the, around the same time that Neblime is doing his. Uh, we have a Larvas coming up here. This is basically a, uh, you can turn your, what was formerly known as the creep colony into a sort of hatch production style structure, but it's very vulnerable. It's only got 240 health to armor, very easy to be sniped. In fact, that would be a use case of the vassals where you can see another Spraith has been put up and that's specifically to try to protect these very vital structures that cost 125 Vespine each. So if the, if there were say 12 vassals coming on in here, they could really depower this or, or uh, you know power that down, shoot it down really fast. Vassals are indeed going to be shooed away by the Spraith and the Quasis. Nebla, I'm doing a pretty nice job demonstrating how to respond to this kind of pressure while ground units galore are starting to filter on out. The Zealot, the Golems, the Idols, all of those are going to be very important units. And he has the cliff advantage here, so Shambler should be in an, a prime position to deal with this Quasi push. And they don't do very well versus the front line here either. Uh, the Golem has three armor. The Zealot has three armor as long as its shields hold, and then it goes down to two armor. Uh, so this is looking pretty good here. And as these vassals fall, which can't really be controlled, I like the idea of putting a Quaz pool down there, but that's 200 resources down the drain and the worker dead. So that might have been a little bit too expensive here for Neblime. He's got to pull the workers and tr slowly try to chip away at some of these units like the Golem. I can't tell if it's really working, but he does end up getting rid of that tanky frontliner. The problem is the Golem is still alive over here. And there is, yeah, the, the fact that there's another one, they can focus on down the static defenses, but Hydralisks are almost done hatching. And that is the power switch here for Neblime. They can power down all of this heavy armor. What does Shambler do with this opportunity? He's still got a little bit of crowd control. The Golem dealing melee splash. The Idol dealing ranged splash. Is it going to be enough to get a grievous amount of worker kills? I feel like maybe it is. The Zealots themselves doing such a great job as well. That Golem trying its best to equip the Zealots for a couple of extra kills. That sacrifice was not in vain. Neblime down to 15 workers really needs to start putting on the, uh, the counter pressure. Or at the very least trying to hold his ramp. Otherwise... He is in for a world of pain. And this ramp is something we can talk about, right? Uh, as uh, weird as it looks visually, that's just because we eventually are going to build tiles uh, to have this look good. Uh, but, you know, we, we were all experimenting with how to make interesting ramp tiles and stuff. And now you know. Now you know what's up. Some tile bugs over here as well. One of the things I recommend to mappers is you, you want to switch over to the buildable tile view, and that will catch tiles like these. There's also this uh, issue up here, but you know, manu manually placing tiles is a real chore. It's something that unfortunately we do have to do because the uh, author of the mapping software has not released his source code. So who would have guessed? Clumping up around this Kagrant, trying to protect it for dear life. The workers pulling off the line yet again. The golems slowly being phased out, but the circuits are gonna finish. So I think Neblime will hold. It's just, he's gonna lose more workers in a time where he really can't be affording to do that. Well, what else do we have here? A lot of idle workers at the natural for Shambler. Got a bit of money in the bank that he could be using to spend more. He's, he has built a redundancy pylon. We'll see what else is in the cards. No flying units available right now for Neblime. I liked, I, I really like the instinct to try to do that, like, you know, immediate wall, or so to speak, with the Quazeth pool, but it's 200 minerals, and he lost the worker, and he didn't cancel it, you know what I mean? So... Uh, that, that's a that very expensive loss that could have been a lot of workers to replenish after his, his losses. So that's a tight margin where you really want to be making sure that you're going to get that money back. Uh, I imagine he might have th thought about a Hatcherosk instead if he had the money for it. But in the moment, he probably did not. So there you go. Crazy moments already in this game. Warden on the ramp. Shambler not too interested in poking further. He feels like the position is too dug in. And obviously the early expenditure on Spraiths means that the anti-air is good, uh, so vassals aren't really going to be a good option. But this, this might be an opportunity where you consider dropping an embassy and thinking about 
uh, going for a Trojan or an Envoy to, to actually unload on top of the, the worker line or something. I feel like that could be pretty good because then you'd be fighting where the circuits are not. Ardent Authority finishes up a third gateway as well. And we do have some st static defense, a lot of static defense over here, actually. I don't think it's going to be done by the time the Zeths get here, but it'll be pretty close. And actually, Nebulime is lacking his timing a little bit here. So, in fact, I'm pretty sure that Shambler is totally fine here. But we'll see if he reacts, uh, ex like, very quickly when this attack comes in. I think he's just fine. I mean, there's only six, uh, there's six Zeths over here. He might not have even noticed. He might have just been like, nah, la di da I'm going to move my units further up. So that drop not being too effective. But I guess he scouts. He does get the scout off of that. It's an ardent authority. So there's a Cantors on the way. Again, no transport for them. So that is going to be a bit of a point of contention. The Hierophant tagging some of these units to slow them down on the approach. The Zealots now trying to do their best at, you know, soaking up all of this damage. Nebulim is in trouble. And as that Hierophant starts to, you know, de uh, disenchant the uh, the Kagrans and the, the Circuit, that is actually going to slow its attack rate once that overlay turns red. Looks like instead, all of these idols, with their splash damage, Shambler wants to set them upon all of the workers. And it's kind of working out, in terms of uh, casualties. At the end of the day, that wasn't as powerful of an attack, as uh, fruitful of an attack as it could have been. And I do think that maybe uh, Shambler missed an opportunity where he could have moved in with his Acantor and a couple of extra reinforcements and been a lot scarier. As of right now, Neblime is going to go ahead and un... Power. Oh yeah, this is something that we haven't talked about yet, but this is a feature of Ithaca where you can uh, mine this mineral field once and then depleted mineral fields as they are uh, become uh, hard, walkable. You, you can just walk straight through them. So the pathfinding, obviously, uh, not the, the best. <laughs> it's, it's safe to say that the pathfinding is not the best there. Uh, but as Zerg, it wouldn't even be that, that out of the question to put like a hatch here and then mine this from inside and just enjoy the extra depleted mineral income because it's three and not two. So it used to be two back in the day, uh, but it being three is actually not that bad. I mean, you still want to saturate this base first, but in a pinch, if you were contained on the three bases, that could be an option. Now the Zets have been unloaded over here and they will definitely make uh, this, uh, this a little bit annoying for Shambler who's done the same idea to try to take his third. And if he doesn't take that base, can he take the nine o'clock? I mean, I guess, right? It's not out of the out of the question, but I feel like this is hard to get uh, defenses set up. All right, the fact that the Zets didn't leave behind any corpses there should indicate to the Shambler that the Avaleth was empty. This worker is gonna go ahead and unburrow, and we are gonna see a fourth base being taken at the same time by Nebulime. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile, and he's got his ski backed up, which means not only can he make Bactalisks out of his Hydras, which are sort of like low-grade artillery units, you can kind of think of them as, he can also make Skittercores and start uh, attempting to attack the enemy's workers for a change. A little bit of worker revenge. Now, these Quasis are vital frontline units here for uh, Hydras, and Neblime has lost them all without really getting too much damage dealt to everything else. One back to Lisk as well, going to be kind of caught in the, by the wayside there off of maybe a rally off of its eggs, so that's a little unfortunate and expensive loss. Another Quasilisk stares down the Protoss, like, what are you going to do? And look at this, taking the upper twelve, the inner 12, that's an interesting choice, right? He's got, it's got double gas, so it's definitely useful. He wants to deny that from Neblime and maybe expand towards his enemy as a result. Now, is he going to get trapped here? Because he's only left out, out one mineral field. It's not a lot of mobility. But as a result, you know, the Acantors all the way back here might end up getting uh, overwhelmed by incoming Zerg, right? And those would have been linchpins for defenses. Zealots wreaking havoc in the mineral line meanwhile. But yeah, these Acantors are going to go down. Shambler did not have enough units to sort of bodyguard them. And sure, you get a couple of worker kills up here, but that was not nearly as good as it could have been. Immediately trying to set up some wardens for defense. We might even see some engrams later on once the resources are obliging. A little bit of a counter push over here, but there's an Acantor and plenty of static defense to deal with that. Not really any concerns. You can easily outrun the Acantor shots in, uh, in isolation. Oh uh, yeah, these wardens have to get canceled as well. Now I'm doing a pretty good job of applying some pressure, and I wouldn't be surprised if that Nexus ends up uh, going by the wayside here. Shambler has not canceled it yet, and he will cancel it at the very last second. So, at the very least, he uh, saves his a uh, little bit of his mineral expenditure there. I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have hated it if he left it, let it, let it finish, and then just went for a uh, counter push. But the problem is he, uh, most of his power is in these slow moving Acantors. He doesn't really have a uh, mo mobile front line. At this point, Nebulim knows he's ahead though. 
He's confirmed that there's no base at nine o'clock. He knows that there's no base in the sort of pocket natural that you can take, or the pocket third that you can take. And he kept his pocket third up while shutting down this uh, interior 12. So might not have been the best strategic choice. I like the idea if he can actually hold it because it gives you so much power. And now these Hydras are gonna be aware that this Nexus is warping in. Shambler gets nothing for free. That's the third Nexus in a row that he has canceled in his efforts to attempt at taking more bases. And meanwhile, we have the exact opposite. Okay, Shambler thinks that to himself, maybe I'll just expand in the bottom right or something. I don't know, he's, he's moving around with his scribe. We'll see what he wants to get done. But inner 12 is being taken by Neblime. That is a scary sight. And yes, indeed, he's going to go for this base in the bottom right. So that's Shambler's idea of his third base. Definitely in a spot where he can't really, he just doesn't have much money, right? He doesn't have that much income compared to his opponent, who is sticking it out at tier one for a while, adding the Zorkish Shroud. Not too interested in uh, grabbing that Iral Iris anytime soon, it looks like. Putting a hatch in the centerpiece over here, I like that. Spreading the Kager all around, making sure that we can uh, add some more to that. You know, if you're thinking about it from the perspective of like, how do I set up defenses, right? One of the things that we've all talked about recently, and after this map was made, in fact, is that you should probably have like three or four unbuildable tiles b behind any ramp. So on the high ground of any ramp, there should be unbuildable tiles. Now on the low ground, it doesn't matter as much, but on the high ground, absolutely. And the reason for that is because of cliff advantage. Uh, when you combine that with structures instead of units, where the structures can be body blocked by a bunch of units, it's actually quite powerful. And I don't mind it being powerful, but it seemed a little bit too one note. So now we're thinking about maybe we can expand. I can't believe a fourth Nexus has to be canceled here for Shambler. That's unbelievable. Oh, he's going to see if he can make a push happen on the other side while all those Zets were sent off to the bottom right. And the front line is indeed starting to fall, which means you can get on top of these Bactalisks. And since their bounces are only conditional on how much range they have when they attack, that actually is very, very powerful if you can get some frontline units on top of them to slow them down. Now, at the same time, more units streaming on in. The Drakadin staying alive as long as they can, but one of the Acanters has gone down. There's just so many of them that I actually don't know how Neblime is planning on moving past this force. I guess he can keep cycling back and trying to dodge the incoming Scarab shots, but those Plasma Shells are hitting big. And now we've got more frontline units. We've got Positrons for some splash damage as well, as if he needed any more. Now, unfortunately, the Scribe goes down, the, the brave hero. This base is already set up and saturated with 110 workers almost for Neblime. More and more Hydras coming on in. He's building a bunch of Scythicors to try to deal with this force. Uh, at this point, uh, yeah, Architects have indeed already been adjusted back in the history books. I uh, didn't remember this game is from the 10th of April, so it's a way, way back. But uh, remember that uh, nothing in here can, like the Acantors and the Architects cannot shoot up. So those Positrons were very, very important targets for anti-splash, and more of them need to be made in order to escort this artillery. But maybe it doesn't matter too much because he can still deny this uh, fifth base, I will remind you. However, the fourth was never really saturated. So this is effectively Neblime's fourth base. He will drop down to three if this one goes down. And indeed it does. All these workers get cleaned up as well. Thanks to the Acantors and the automatic returns. Neblime not controlling his workers right now to try to safeguard them. Instead, he's just going to go straight for more Scythricors, try to deal with this force. Only one Drakadin remains. Not great focus fire out of uh, Shambler. He is going to see if he can focus down that last one. More and more Scythricors raining on in to deal with the last remaining anti-air option. Golems can be pretty good anti-ground control, but they can't attack up. So you got to keep that in mind. The Scythricor is currently doing their best to just rend the uh, shields of all of these units. More Dracodins on their way. More Positrons on their way. And slowly crawling into Neblime's natural... Is that really where we're going next? Drop down to even workers. Remember that Shambler is still on two bases. I guarantee you his bases are depleted. And it's all Scythricors right now. All the air units pivoting away. Well, now the Architect and the Acantors are likely to fall, especially as they've been abandoned by their front line that is charged forth furiously into that pocket third. Not long for this world at this point, but hey, those Acantors are still going to crawl forward and see what more they can do. They're just going to thin the herd of the ground units. This gets just raining hell from above. We've got more and more units streaming on in for Shambler, though, including another Acantor, but all of the artillery has been dealt with, and the Zealots were held at the pocket third. This means that the Skits are going to dive on forward, but they're not attacking the Positrons, which are dealing all that splash damage. Additionally, there is an idol here, so... I mean, Shambler's hemorrhaged a lot of his Acantors, but he still has a little bit of a force pop up, popped up over here. 
And since what Neblime pivoted into was mostly Skiths, he's now got to think about what else to make. He has made his Iral Iris. He will be going for extra stuff. I'm, I'm looking around for where it is. Okay, Iral Iris in the main, above the workers. And now, indeed, these Zets strike again. Shambler can, of course, pale off a couple of his units to deal with this. Even another Avaleth for good measure as well. But the Skither cores will not be stopped. They will destroy yet another Akantor. Sure, a couple of extra shots from the Positron are good. But how longer, how much longer can this Pocket Third stay alive? There's not that many Hydras. The Alkai Gitath is coming up here for Nebline. He's going to attempt to use Kagralisks or maybe Almax to really turn the screws on this high armor Protoss force. Positrons are pretty, uh, not very durable, I would say. They are pretty squishy. So you got to keep that in mind. Workers being pulled. That's kind of the antithesis of what you want here, thanks to all the splash damage. But despite that, that pocket third does hold. And now this three o'clock base has been erected. This base got canceled again. That's five Nexuses in a row that Shambler has had to cancel. Finally, he will uproot these pesky Zets that have caused him so much headache and so much delay. But the stab back from Neblime as he puts up his Mutat Spire, thinking about getting even more on the technology side. He hasn't actually made any of the Alkag units, as far as I can tell. Charging forth with Zorius Hydra. When the, Zor when the Zorius attacks something, it speeds up allies that move towards that target. And you can see here exactly what is on the mind of Neblime. He's going to pop in over here and force this cancel yet again. The forces over here cannot deal with that. There's some massing up here, and there is one Akantor, two Akantors, but are they going to be able to get into a position in time? I don't know that they can. Neblon trying to force himself through the depleted mineral field. Looks like he will be indeed able to cancel that after all. Or will he even need to cancel it? Will he even get the opportunity? No, he will not. It's destroyed. Can Shambler afford such a loss of minerals? I love the Akantor placement over here versus the Zethrocores, but yep, there's the first Almaxilus, maybe a sign of what's to come as eight more are about to hatch, and there go the Akantors. Shambler been contained on his own damn map to two bases for so long. He does have this nice uh, warden Akantor combo for defense, but when those Almax come in, I would not expect them to stay alive for very long, especially with a horde of Zets here to try to absorb most of the warden damage. And look at this, Neblime, a cheeky bastard. He's going to go for his own expansion there. Also taking the bottom right main and patrolling around the bottom left to make sure. <laughs> Shambler starts the typing. When the typing starts, you know that the Shambler is about to come to his end, his own demise. I will say for posterity's sake, I'm pretty sure he, he uh, was able to defeat Neblime on this map a few times uh, in the other games. I just went for the one that looked the biggest. And of course, that's the one where Neblime survives the early pressure and apparently gets into a very winning position. I won't call it over just yet, but when Shambler starts typing, you kind of know. His bases are depleted, so his mineral income's not so good. He has capped his geysers, at least, so there is that. Getting more Vespine per return, he can start to transition into more Vespine costing units like Ecclesiasts or Hierophants. But his gateway count is pretty low for this stage in the game. He's only got three of them, or four of them, mind you, my mistake. But yeah, the Almax just popping in here to absolutely annihilate the Acantors. They're just ignoring the Wardens. They pick off all the splash damage. There's one more Acantor here. And a second one just finished. So we'll see how that one goes. Bactyls for a sieging the ramp. Trying to neutralize that cliff advantage that Shambler will enjoy from that position. And hey, the Bactyls come out, but they're immediately beset upon. And I guess Shambler decided to rage quit at that point because uh, this was, as far as I know, this was his replay and he just immediately left. No GG. Why Why no GG, Shambler? Wasn't it a GG? Uh, Shambler ends up capitulating there, but Neblime has won the day. And maybe that's exactly what will happen if Shambler or any other Protoss uh, meets him in the finals, the grand final of Acropolis number one's throne room stage. I hope you guys are excited for that. It will be this Saturday as of the day of recording. And if that day's already passed and you're watching this back, just remember that there's been daily uploads for a long time. This represents the 70th daily cast over video that has been put on the channel. And that doesn't even include stuff like the tournament casts, right? So a lot of games have been cast. A lot of content has been put out there and the game is just getting better and better. So join us for more Cosmonarchy. Stay subscribed. Join our Discord server to play this goddamn game with us. And of course, you can send us some money on the coffee page in the bottom right. Until then, GG.